Yeah, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down till I burn out. I just wanna live fast, I don't wanna look back and say I could have done more than I did now. Sometimes it can be hard, yeah, it can be hard, yeah, it can be hard when you grow up. People fill you with doubt, you start thinking about what you're gonna do now. But we only got one chance and got one life to live. And it's do or die, gotta make it count, so lose your worries, let your problems go on, until my whole body burns out, I ain't never gonna slow down. Hello and welcome to today's adventures. It's more of a, a general walk today. When I go out in the fields like now, I'm actually looking and observing for what things are about round. That way then I can come and do a video. At the moment, like I said, we've had a bit of a dry season so far and the wildflowers don't really seem to be flourishing as much as normal. I've seen the odd butterflies I've been walking about, but what I thought I'd do quickly is just show you what's in my bag. It's only a normal bag. Now, when I'm out and about, obviously I carry my, my, my camera, my 750D and my macro lens. That, that's a fact, I, do that I can use it for anything I want. But what I also carry about with me is my flash because you never know if it's insects. And when I'm doing insects, I like to use the flash along with my Jam Bells, Crafty Bells diffuser. That's a must, that goes everywhere with me. So that is my sort of my macro session section. I use, I use a diffuser more for insects because when I'm taking the shots, the flash helps to freeze the subject more and I can get a lot sharper images, even if the, if the light's a bit poor. So that's why I tend to use a flash a lot with insects. When I'm doing my flow photography, I like to go all natural, as we'll say, and I just like to do it on longer exposure and out for the best because that's the way I like it. I like natural light, I like the dreamy looking effects. That's the way I take my shots. It's what I see in my head. Also, I carry around with me, is this is a Sigma 50 to 500 mil lens. It's not a macro lens. It's actually a second hand lens that my partner picked up. Not me, my partner picked up some years back. And we're down, you know, and it's one I carry with me because at 50 mil, it's absolutely fantastic. But if I want to just spread out a little bit more and I see some birds flying about, then I can just swap over, bang it on, and I've got my lens straight away. And like I said, it goes from 50 to 500 mil. I've used it for portraits. I've used it for my, when I get to zoos and safari parks. And I used it for all my wildlife bird shots, which I'm hoping to show you some of that today as well. We just see how they go, it's real plate by here. So what I, like I said, what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna have a good walk about and see what we can find. It's more of a walk and talk, I think this one will be. So I hope you join me. I've just stumbled across these lovely white flowers and them growing in amongst the dead grass and with the grass at the back of it, it really gives me the nice light. And these flowers, I've got lovely trumpets and like a purpley texture to them and them really nice. So I fancy a shot of this. Now, I'm on my tripod because I've had to slow it, things a bit down and my hands are a bit steady. I'm at 1 125th of the power, I'm at f6.3 and I also about 200 for this shot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the center flower. And then what I'm actually gonna do is just take multiple shots. I'm gonna get it as, as focused as I can. And I'm gonna let the aperture run through the picture. And that way then I should get a smoother picture. These pictures I'm taking today are more my interpretations of what I see in my head. So they might vary a little bit as in when I edit them, but I will put a picture up of unedited and edited pictures so you can see the style. So let's crack on and take this shot. So I ain't even gone five yards and I come across in the moss, this lovely flower and it's got lovely precious turn and a nice colour and this is what I like about these tripods of Vanguard's this is the VEL3 plus and it allows me to spread the legs wide and get any handle I want and get a shot I want without disturbing or damaging anything that's around me which like I says I'm all for nature and all for wildlife 
So I'm going to focus on this one now, down here. And it's just, like I said, it's a leaf with a little bit of a bend on. But the colours, you'll see in a minute, are so bright and vibrant. And it's, it's a nice composition. It's something small, but neat and tidy. And it makes it feel like, you know, the nature's coming back to life. So let's get focused on it. I have already set up my camera. This one's a bit different. I'm at one one hundred of a second. I'm at ISL 125 and I'm at 6.3, F6.3. And what I've done is I've focused down on it and I've got the picture in the rule of thirds line. And that will be just how I want it. So what do you think of that shot? Within five feet, I've just turned around, started packing my stuff up, and I've just, at the corner of my eye, spotted this little spider, and he's actually like, snug, holding onto the the old um, seed heads. And I think he'll make for a good mono shot. Now, I've got this, my camera shutting speed around one, two hundred of a second, because the wind's blowing, and I really need to take a few shots to try and nail the one, so it won't be a one shot. It'll be probably five, six, seven shots to try and get it. I'm gonna take my time with this shot, because I really like it and I think it could make for a good black and white or mono shot. So if it's any good, I shall put it up there after this. Have you ever wondered how they get the pictures of birds so well? It ain't no secret to the really. What they really do is they put a bit of bird seed down and this attracts the birds. And after a bit, the birds get used to you and start coming in for the food. And then what we do is we naturally look where the bird is perching and landing. So we don't take pictures of the bird that's actually on the post eating the seed. What we do is we take pictures of the bird that's actually in the trees where it looks a lot more na natural. Here in Middleton Lakes, you can, as you can see, the robins are pretty damn tame, so you can get as close as you want. You, you, I can take this picture of a macro lens here now, because <laughs> they are really tame as anything. So what you want to do next time you're out is, like I say, put a bit of bird seed down. Hello, Mr. Robin. There you go. Put a bit of bird seed down and watch how they react and where they're coming from. Because 90% of the times, a bird will actually land in the same place. It has its same set branchage, branches, branches. So you can get that shot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I do, how I'll get the shots now, because you've seen how close they come and how easy they come. When I say I can get a bird within a foot of me, that's literally less than a foot. It's actually in hands width away. So I'm gonna set up the big lens now I'm going to show you how I can pause it and show you some shots. As you can as you can see, I'm using a tripod for wildlife photography. Now, a lot of people you and all these, but me personally, I, I, the weight is a bit heavy for me and shaking about, and I like to get that picture and I like to get that dot straight on that bird's eye every time. What I do is I just keep all the loose, keep everything loose. So all I'm actually using it for is to stop me shaking up and down. This way then, when I'm focusing on the bird, I can actually move with the bird. It don't matter where the bird's going, and I can get that perfect shot. Just gives me like, just minute seconds to compose it. We've got the birds now. We've, now got, we've got the birds feeding now, as you know. So what I'm doing now is I've been watching where the birds are landing. So I've just set it up now. I'm gonna keep it all loose, and as soon as the birds come on, I'm gonna focus and take the shot. Settings, I'm at one five hundredth of a, the shutter. I'm at, at the moment, I'm at uh, ISO 400 because the way the light keeps turning. And I'm at a shutter speed of f5.6. That's all I need. All this lens is, is an old Sigma lens. It's an old Sigma 50 to 500. Believe me, the most, it's a second hand lens. It's as cheap as cheap, so I use it for my video and I use it for my wildlife photography, and I don't think you can beat it. So let's get some pictures of these birds now on, the, on these trees.
I hope you've enjoyed that bit of a, a walk, should I say. Yeah, it's not all been about macro today. It's been about wildlife. And I did say at the start, it's, you know, small things and large things. And it's nice to get out and experience these birds and these animals and flowers that have started coming. It really gives me a nice buzz and a good feeling inside when I've been out for a walk. It gets rid of those, that tension and that stress. I really do miss being behind the camera a lot, but that's the way it goes. Like I said about the rain, as you can see, it's a bit dark over there and the rain clouds have come in. So I think we're going to be having a bit of rain, but at least I've managed to get this video out on time. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed, all enjoyed it, like I says. And please, all, please, 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 all stay safe. Look after yourself. And until next time, happy snapping.